Encounter is brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Hello friends, we're so glad you're here with us on the Encounter program. I'm Reverend Rachel Helgeson from Northminster Presbyterian Church in Enwell, New York. I'd like to introduce to you two of my friends and colleagues who are in Oklahoma, Reverend Lucas Levy Keppel and Reverend Alana Keppel Levy. Um, I think I got that right. And they are outside of Tulsa, Oklahoma at Trinity Presbyterian Church in Bixby, Oklahoma. You can get out your maps and figure out where that is. Yes, that is right down. Um, you can start singing about Oklahoma. I'm pretty sure that they're tired of hearing that song. Um, but thanks be to God that they're able to do this and we're able to talk together. Um, I wanted to invite my friends to come because they've done something pretty amazing. They brought together clergy and ministers from all over the country to create something really creative. So before I go too far into that, I'd like to play a clip of that for you. Um, and you'll just get to listen in and hear how that goes. So I'm really excited that you'll get to hear this because I, as Lucas told me a little, just a little earlier that this was something that they spent a lot of time <laughs> preparing and, um, but it was not out of, um, out of griping, but out of love. And so, and you can hear that and you'll get to hear a little bit about how that goes. So let me share that with you now. One moment, friends. One of the things that I've been learning about producing for myself is that I have to do all these things for myself, which um, is an interesting thing. Um, and I know Lucas's background is in media. As we were talking a little earlier there, um, some of you all may know one of the other friends on who's a host, he was ordained into, into ministry as a media minister. And Lucas actually didn't, I don't think you got ordained as a minister in media, but your background is in that. So um, he's probably, I'm a little nervous in front of him to be doing this. So it's kind of a funny, funny thing. There we go. Okay, here we go. He's wearing pajama pants? I didn't know he could wear pajama pants. My outfit is so itchy. Please, everyone, we just have to go as is. Now, did everyone bring their lamps? Check, check, check. check. And did everyone bring oil for their lamps? I stayed up all night pressing fresh oil just for this occasion. Check. I helped deliver my next door neighbor's baby. And she gave me this oil as a thank you. Check. I spent the last year studying the mechanics of the oil press, and I developed an innovation that will make oil faster and cheaper for everyone. Check. I remembered to get my oil when I was sharing with the widows and orphans like I do every week. Check. I brought oil with me, but, well, I don't need to tell you why. Wonderful. This is going great so far. Well... Of course they have oil. They're so lucky and everyone gives them nice things. No one even cares if I don't have any oil. Well, I had enough oil to feed an army, but I made latkes and then I lathered my bunions and I treated my lather and then I threw it up in the air and watched it rain down because it was all golden and sparkly. Well, I was having a fight with my next door neighbor one night while they were sleeping. I poured my oil into their garden and I lit it on fire. Oh geez, what were you fighting about? They said my cornbread tasted better last week. So you lit their garden on fire? And I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Well, I would have brought some oil, but I just assumed that one of you little people would have done it for me. I mean, really, I've got better things to do with my time. We were supposed to bring oil? <laughs> <laughs> OK. 
<laughs> there you go. You got a little taste of that, friends. <laughs> so, Lucas and Alana, this was really um, a labor of love, but also watching it again, I forgot how funny it is. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what this project was and how it came together and who we just saw right now? <laughs> Well, you know, before the pandemic, we have a, a theater group at our church um, about four times a year. I'll write original plays for them to do, including one for Youth Sunday. And it's been such a fun way to connect with a congregation and to connect with the Bible stories in a different way. And once the pandemic started, of course, that was necessarily going to shift. Um, I think at one point during the summer, when it was the feeding the multitude, one of those feeding the multitude passages, Lucas and I, just the two of us did a play of people who were at the back of the crowd trying to figure out like, wait, what did he say? I'm hungry. Are, are they feeding us? You know, and we just, just uh, got a blanket at a park and because we're in the same household, we did it without masks and that was a whole lot of fun. Um, but you know, the pandemic stretched out the need to lock down, it stretched out longer than I think most of us were anticipating. And so we were trying to figure out what would be a way to do a Zoom play since, you know, these, all of these um, video calling, conferencing things are such a part of our life. What is a way that we can, we can do worship in a different way and, and kind of wink at this, this medium that we're all kind of struggling or adapting to, or struggling to adapt to, I guess that's what I'm saying. So, yeah. um, Lucas is by far the more technically minded of us and I'm the more you know, hokey, hammy, jokey one. So um, once I, I realized that the, the parable of the 10 bridesmaids was coming up in the election area, I thought like, here is a thing that could be a Zoom call, right? You know, all of this time that they're waiting and what could they do? And so for a couple of weeks there after the idea came from, from the spirit from I don't know where, um, I asked Lucas, could I write a joke like this? could you make it look like this on a Zoom if I if I made that a joke? Or like, what kind of jokes could I do that wouldn't be impossible to make? And I'll say, normally she doesn't consult with me about the jokes. This was because no. the technical restrictions needed oh. to be there uh, for this. That we, we started talking about, well, we could do that. That would be really difficult to do. Let's see if we can do something else. That might be possible. Let's see where we mm -hmm. go with that. Yeah. yeah. Because I did have a Zoom meeting with some congregants where, you know, everybody's stacked in their boxes like the Brady Bunch. And in one person's screen, someone in the background walked across. And literally the next moment, somebody over here started walking across in another person's screen. <laughs> and it was totally random and unrelated. And the whole chat, you know, we all just cracked up, except the two people in those windows who were like, what's so funny? And I saw that and I thought this is funny. Like this is, this is going to work. We could definitely parlay this into something more intentional. And so that, you know, all of the things about tossing balls from one window to another <laughs> or throwing things at somebody in a lower window, all of that came out of that moment. That was just such a beautiful, we all need to laugh at this. You know, it's, it's hard out there. We all need something to laugh at right now. <laughs> and so can you tell, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the characters that we um, just saw? So, Yes. Yeah, so with there being, you know, 10 bridesmaids in the parable that Jesus tells, you know, five of them are foolish and five of them are virtuous uh, or five of them are wise rather. And so I'm trying to figure out, you know, why are these people prepared and unprepared and what does that look like? And it occurred to me, we have seven deadly sins and, and there's seven holy virtues that correspond and 14 is close to 10. So I thought, you know, we can, we can shift from there and look at our own sinfulness and our own, you know, possible virtues and see what in the, the evil that we do keeps us from being prepared and what in the good that we do helps get us there. And from there, you know, it was very easy to start making jokes because, you know, once we can laugh at ourselves, then we can really see what are our motives really? What are we doing? What are we, what are we not doing? Where are we not lying to ourselves? And, and so Idlana posted about this in a theater group on Facebook and folks from all over the country, uh, actually almost everyone ordained, not everyone um, in a current pastor position, but everyone was ordained that decided to, to show up and do this. And it was fantastic. Um, we had everyone record uh, individually their, their material oh. and then send it in. And I had the rather daunting task of compiling it all into one video at the end, um, <laughs> recognizing we didn't do a rehearsal with everyone first. Uh, so everyone interpreted their characters in the way that they felt came from the script. So thanks be to the Holy Spirit for giving everyone a wonderful interpretation. Uh, and we had the opportunity to do at least a couple reshoots that 
things were missed and we needed to get that in. But other than that, it was really cool. But that's, you know, one of the most fun parts about doing theater, you know, and having all the rehearsals is seeing how actors interpret their characters. You know, as the writer, I have something in mind, but actors always do something different. And I don't say that as a detriment. I mean, they come up with things that you would never occur to you and you see this, you know, finished product and it's amazing and, it, and it's become something more. And so I wasn't sure with this, you know, virtual format, if that would still happen. And it absolutely still happened. I never should have doubted that. Actors will always do things you never expect. That's what makes it so fun. <laughs> and speaking of things you don't expect, a lot of the actors played against, uh, against, against the type that uh, they were, and including yourself, Rachel. Uh, I don't right. think you were the most wrathful person in the world. Um, so to have no, you play like, wrath. When you, when you volunteered to play wrath, we laughed. <laughs> 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 that was funny. Or like Jessa, um, who was my next door neighbor in seminary who played Sloth, is the polar opposite of that uh, personality and energy level. And so anytime she said anything, I can't help but laughing because she talks faster than I do. I mean, she has all the energy and ideas in the world. And so, yeah, it was just it was such a hoot, um, including, you know, and two of the cast members were people we don't know from Adam. I mean, that we, this was our first encounter with them. Was um, so yeah. it's so cool. You know, our connectional church is so much more connectional when we realize, than we realize that things emerge um, and it's delightful. Um, we, we really enjoyed that about it. <laughs> yeah, I know I had heard that some of the folks were, some were from academia, they were professors, others are in parish ministry. Some are in between things. Some are, one was an interim transitional pastor. I mean, talking about ministry in a lot of different ways and spaces and um, what does that look like? And then you're like, okay, let's just do this and go. Um, it's a wonderful thing. And yeah, as Alana and Lucas said, I was wrath. So if you were wondering if that voice sounded familiar, but not familiar, <laughs> That's why um, I don't usually play Wrath in my normal everyday <laughs> life. So um, it was fun to play out of type and to you. Um, and it was actually pretty funny because I was like, well, if I were Wrath, I would do this. So, um, you know, it was great. So thank you for that opportunity. <laughs> yeah, and decided that Wrath wasn't going to be just like rage and screaming, but more just a jerk who messes with people, right? Because that's a little more accessible, you know, in terms of, the regularity with which we go down that path sin wise, it's much more like just being a jerk to one another. And so I thought, you know, messing with what that's, that's a, uh, we can, we can throw away a lot of energy just being mean to each other for no reason. Right. And that in a very mundane level. So I thought, that'd be fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, if you're just joining us um, on the encounter program, we're so glad that you're here. And I'm, um, this is Reverend Rachel Helgeson. I am the pastor at Northminster Presbyterian Church in Enwell. And I have my friends from Oklahoma who are also colleagues of Lucas Levy Keppel and Alana Keppel Levy. They are co pastors at Trinity Presbyterian Church at Bix Bixby, Oklahoma. If you look at your map, that's outside of Tulsa. So um, we're so glad that they're able to be here. And we've been talking about the project that they did together and sort of coordinated. One did more of the artistic part of it, and the other did all the technical pulling it together bits. Um, um, what a wonderful creative team they have in as co-pastors and as spouses and thanks be to God that the Holy Spirit works in the middle of it and people responded to the call um, to keep it light, um, which was a um, dramatic interpretation of the, the parable of the, the bridesmaids. Um, and and as we were just saying a moment ago, I, I played Wrath, which is against type, um, but it was fun to see how, um, who are the bridesmaids? What were they about? What, why were they waiting? And what does that look like for a Zoom phone call? I, I know that for both of you, this is not the only creative endeavor that you've done or that you have been part of. And so I'd love to hear a little bit more about um, the other outlets that use your creativity together or individually. Yeah, one of the things that we like to say in the church, because we do have some different skills and talents, um, is that that's why there's two of us, you know, like he, he can do so much of the technology and technical things. And, you know, I'm, I've gotten very into word nerdery lately. Um, I, <laughs> I, uh, I actually have a, a chronic illness and uh, I deal with chronic pain all the time, which means I have to rest a lot. Um, but that has transformed into this odd little hobby. I do um, background research and word studies of the original languages, um, uh, 
Bible passages, looking at the words in Greek and Hebrew, and then I annotate the scripture passages for the lectionary. So, um, so much of our understanding of, of Bible verses depends on the translator and depends on the assumption that we understand the words they're using the same way that they do. But so often there's all of this nuance and range of meaning behind the words. And so um, even with the plays that I do, there's all kinds of subtle Greek and Hebrew jokes that, you know, you don't have to kind of get them to sort of understand the characters, but it's what, really one of my favorites of those is how you named all of the Phoenician sailors in one of your things using Phoenician names so that they, you know, oh, you would have that there. That just, it's so subtle. And yet it, it was uh, really neat to have that I, kind of. I wrote a play on piece. Jonah that's up on the website um, where I put all of my things, which is so much Bible.com. Um, but, you know, in doing the Jonah play and he wants to take a boat for Tarshish. And so I got distracted and started researching Phoenician sailors and thought, well, if I'm going to have Phoenician sailor characters, they need to have real Phoenician sailor names. Um, so I am an, I'm word nerdy and, and history nerdy, um, but I know not every pastor has chronic illness and needs to rest all the time. And so because I'm doing this work already, it was really important for me to be able to share that. Um, with people who are interested in word background and history, but do not have the time to go combing through what is this word and where does it come from? And there are just remarkable insights into, into what things mean. Um, I just learned the other day in the, the Good Shepherd password, passage from, from John chapter 10, um, I had always assumed when Jesus says, I'm the Good Shepherd, that that word was agathos, which is where we get the name agatha from, which means good. And it's like intrinsic goodness, you know, from the core, your essence of goodness. But it's actually kalos, which is about external signs of goodness. And so it can be like noble or worthy. And so when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, he says, I am the worthy shepherd. And the worthy shepherd is the one who lays down his life for his sheep. And so he's talking about even if you didn't know about the inner character of the shepherd, you can see from the actions, this is clearly your shepherd, not the one that runs away from the wolves. And I, it just transformed my understanding of the passage in an uh, instant. And I love learning that and sharing it with people. So that's that's my little nerdy hobby right now. <laughs> now again, that's it. so much Bible, right? That's so much Bible. So much Bible .com and com. the links are all up there too, including the YouTube link to the video of this play that we've been talking about in this program. Yeah. And I know that um, Lucas and Alana have been willing to share a lot of the things that they're doing creatively. So if this is something that your church or your um, synagogue is interested in using, just contact the two of them. I'm pretty sure they'll be like, come on board, let's do this. So um, well, yes. passages. So you know, if you want to click on what is up there about the book of Genesis, then you'll get the whole list. And it's, it's all under Creative Commons, so anyone can use them. We would like to know, but you don't have to necessarily mm -hmm. let us know. Um, and then as, as far as uh, other things, I've been, my background was all in radio. My, mm -hmm. my background was uh, doing radio drama as it happened, um, which is a very weird niche these days. Uh, but it turns out to be really helpful in the midst of a pandemic time because suddenly there's a lot more time in uh, to do more compressed media things for church environment. You know, uh, I had experimented with doing some video in, in the services, but being able to pull in from kind of the, the video background and the audio background and pulling it all together into a worship service has been really, really fulfilling. What um, is compressed media? What? What is compressed media? I don't know that term. Like I, I used little clips of things. Oh, okay, thank yeah. you. I'm not saying Technical knowledge. <laughs> that's that's uh, not. Well, it's good because some of some of my folks would understand that, and our listening folks, because we have engineers and and the university nearby, and some like me from the humanities, it would be. Like, <laughs> I just, I, just yeah. I wanted to make sure I, I caught up. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> We're married. So one of the things, <laughs> one of the things I did recently uh, was a vlog style sermon uh, mm -hmm. where I had a. a I should probably have been carrying it, but I, I had a camera person that followed me around and I walked uh, for the walk to Emmaus scripture passage. I walked out of the sanctuary oh. and we did the sermon with the video following and talking about what it means to walk and talk. And I made a couple jokes about that as well. Just uh, like Aaron Sorkin, just like, so yeah, fancy. Sorkin-esque, I think. Of that. <laughs> um, but it was, it was great uh, to do something a little different, uh, to have that opportunity in a pandemic when we didn't have in-person worship at the time. So I knew that I could do this video and it would be special. 
And uh, mm -hmm. we got lots of comments on all of the, the creative material that we're doing about how much it's meaning to people to be able to see things in different ways. Here we go. He's wearing pajama pants. I didn't know he could wear pajama pants. My outfit is so itchy. Please, everyone, we just have to go as is. Now, did everyone bring their lamps? Check, check, check. check. And did everyone bring oil for their lamps? I stayed up all night pressing fresh oil just for this occasion. Check. I helped deliver my next door neighbor's baby, and she gave me this oil as a thank you. Check. I spent the last year studying the mechanics of the oil press, and I developed an innovation that will make oil faster and cheaper for everyone. Check. I remembered to get my oil when I was sharing with the widows and orphans like I do every week. Check. I brought oil with me, but, well, I don't need to tell you why. Wonderful. This is going great so far. Well, of course they have oil. They're so lucky, and everyone gives them nice things. No one even cares if I don't have any oil. Well, I had enough oil to feed an army, but I made latkes, and then I lathered my bunions, and I treated my lather, and then I threw it up in the air and watched it rain down because it was all golden and sparkly. Well, I was having a fight with my next door neighbor one night while they were sleeping. I poured my oil into their garden and I lit it on fire. Oh geez, what were you fighting about? They said my cornbread tasted better last week. So you lit their garden on fire? And I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Well, I would have brought some oil, but I just assumed that one of you little people would have done it for me. I mean, really, I've got better things to do with my time. We were supposed to bring oil? <laughs> there you go, you got a little taste of that, friends. <laughs> So, Lucas and Alana, this was really um, a labor of love, but also watching it again, I forgot how funny it is. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what this project was and how it came together and who we just saw right now? <laughs> well, you know, before the pandemic, we have a, a theater group at our church um, about four times a year. I'll write original plays for them to do including one for Youth Sunday. And it's been such a fun way to connect with a congregation and to connect with the Bible stories in a different way. And once the pandemic started, of course, that was necessarily going to shift. Um, I think at one point during the summer, when it was the Feeding the Multitude, one of those Feeding the Multitude passages, Lucas and I, just the two of us, did a play of people who were at the back of the crowd trying to figure out like, wait, what did he say? I'm hungry. Are, are they feeding us? You know, we just just uh, got a blanket at a park. And because we're in the same household, we did it without masks. And that was a whole lot of fun. Um, but, you know, the pandemic stretched out the need to lock down. It stretched out longer than I think most of us were anticipating. And so we were trying to figure out what would be a way to do a Zoom play since, you know, these all of these um, video calling conferencing things are such a part of our life. What is a way that we can we can do worship in a different way? And, and kind of wink at this, this medium that we're all kind of struggling or adapting to, or struggling to adapt to, I guess that's what I'm saying. So yeah. um, Lucas is by far the more technically minded of us and I'm the more you know, hokey, hammy, jokey one. So um, once I, I realized that the, the parable of the 10 bridesmaids was coming up in the election area, I thought like, here is a thing that could be a Zoom call, right? You know, all of this time that they're waiting and what could they do? And so for a couple of weeks there after the idea came from, from the spirit from I don't know where, um, I asked Lucas, could I write a joke like this? Could you make it look like this on a Zoom if I if I made that a joke? Or like, what kind of jokes could I do that wouldn't be impossible to make? And I'll say, normally she doesn't consult with me about the jokes. This was because the technical restrictions needed oh. to be there uh, for this. That we, we started talking about, well, we could do that. That would be really difficult to do. Let's see if we can do something else. That might be possible. Let's see where we mm -hmm. can go with that. Yeah. yeah. 
because I did have a Zoom meeting with some congregants where, you know, everybody's stacked in their boxes like the Brady Bunch. And in one person's screen, someone in the background walked across and literally the next moment, somebody over here started walking across in another person's screen. <laughs> and it was totally random and unrelated. And the whole chat, you know, we all just cracked up except the two people in those windows who were like, what's so funny? And I saw that and I thought, this is funny. Like this is, this is going to work. We could definitely parlay this into something more intentional. And so that, you know, all of the things about tossing balls from one window to another or <laughs> throwing things at somebody in a lower window, all of that came out of that moment. That was just such a beautiful, we all need to laugh at this. You know, it's, it's hard out there. We all need something to laugh at right now. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, I'm so glad you're able to join me today and to share a little bit about your gifts with the folks who are in the greater Binghamton region and to know that um, just because the pandemic has flipped everything upside down on its head doesn't mean that creativity isn't still happening, especially in the season of Advent when we are talking about waiting and expectation. The bridesmaids thing is just so on point right now, waiting and expectation and the Zoom um, meetings. <laughs> and um, who are we? You know, are we wrath? <laughs> like, Sometimes you probably are when there's not enough toilet paper um, or maybe we're sloth and we just don't want to get out of our pajamas today or maybe we're humility and we just have or trying to help the best we can and we're not going to tell anybody about it. Um, or maybe, Honestly, I think the genius of this particular project is that I think a little bit of all of those characters are a bit of who we really are in humanity and Jesus picks up on that and Alana, you pick up on the ancient form of um, theater from the Greeks and, the, and from Shakespeare to say, here we are, um, we are the masses and yet we are all one. Um, and so friends, as you go into this Christmas season, I wish you blessings and help and joy, um, but to know that you are not alone and that if you identify with one character more than another right now, that's okay. Um, but just to think about it and sit with it and see where God is calling you in the midst. Um, and as always, if you need help, um, there are churches in the area that, and clergy in the area that would love to just sit and talk with you. Um, or if you need help in other ways, you can always call 211 or the Broome County Council of Churches and we'll figure ways to connect you with the right resources. So thanks be to God to you. This is Reverend Rachel Helgeson and until next time, blessings friends. Thank you.